Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. Today we're going over an issue Figma has with nested interactions and teaching you a way to fix it. But the best way to explain it is to show it. Here we're trying to mock up this menu with a prototype that shows the interaction. When you hover over a menu item, the state changes. And inside of that, there is an icon button that also has its own hover interactions. One problem that can happen when using nested interactive components is that Figma loses track of the state of the interactions. If we hover over a menu item followed by the icon button, then hover over another menu item and go back to the previous one, you can see that Figma has lost track of the state of these nested interactions. Let's go take a look at how we have this built. Here are our list items that have hover interactions on them. Inside of that, we have this icon button component, which has its own hover interaction. This is where Figma has trouble. Next up, we'll teach you a technique we like to call floaty links that will give us more control over our prototype. The first thing causing issues is our hidden icon button layers. Delete these. Then draw a rectangle by pressing R and clicking anywhere on our canvas. Now change the width and height to 32 pixels, the size of our icon button. Give it a transparent pink fill so we can spot it easily but still see through it. We'll rename this layer to floaty link and turn it into a component with the shortcut Option Command K. Now we can paste an instance of this into our navbar. Oops, our auto layout is broken. Let's change this layer to absolute positioning by clicking this icon in the upper right of the design panel. Position it over the location of our first icon button. Duplicate it with Command D and position the second one. If we click the play button and test this new interaction out, you'll notice that we can no longer get into our broken state as we move the mouse in and out of the nav item and the icon button. All right, so how might we use this in a more realistic prototype? Here, we've designed an ingredients explorer and have set up all the components and screens we need to mock up a user choosing to pin content to tabs or just view one by one. The first thing that jumps out to me is all these pink floaty links everywhere in my mockups. What if we actually want to show someone now? Well, we have our floaty link set up as a component, so we can simply select the rectangle and turn its opacity to 0%. All our interactions still hold up and nobody has to know about our sneaky little trick. Looking around this screen, we see prototype connections all over the place. These are simply connecting the first two nav items to all the states needed for active, inactive, and no tabs. We'll cover the basics of prototyping in a future video. Let's preview this prototype. We'll move our mouse around and start trying to click on content to view it and pin it to tabs. We can switch between tabs and even close tabs. Nothing breaks because all our main interactions are at the same level. And our nested interaction still works to show the UI change. That's how you take control over nested interactions in a prototype using floaty links. I hope this Figma helps you carefully craft complexly connected creations. Thanks for watching.